Hey folks, <laughs> David Molnar, your photography mentor here, and my co-host and dear friend, Rich Coleman. Welcome. Hello. Hello. <laughs> that's, my, that's my intro. I figured it out. Yeah. Hello. Hello. That's awesome, man. Um, well, welcome to the episode, the very first inaugural episode of Your Photography Mentor Podcast. I'm excited to be here. Are you excited to be here, Rich? I'm pretty pumped. I'm not going to lie. You got your coffee. I, I've got my water in my David Monar cup. <laughs> I, I need one of those cups. That'd be awesome. I, I'm, I'm, uh, my cup is, is not full of, uh, of that. So, hey, welcome to episode one of the podcast. Um, we are just super excited. Today, we're going to be talking about, what are we talking about today, Rich? We're going to be talking about essential gear needed as a photographer. I feel like it's something as photographers get really hung up on for the wrong reasons. So it's going to mm. be fun to kind of dive in like, what do you actually need compared to what do you want compared to what the world tells you you need? Right, right. Because there's always this pressure of getting the latest, greatest um, you know, camera that's coming out. Like, you know, I'm going to date us right now if you're listening to it a year from now. But uh, we just found out the Canon R5, a new mirrorless um, camera is coming out in uh, hopefully a few months from now. And I'm already like salivating it. But what is it? What is it? Like, I, you know, I saw that camera come out. I saw the announcement for the Canon R5. And I thought, man, that camera will make me a better photographer. You ever feel like that? Almost every time. And I would say like, aside from that like apple technology i'm the same way like when something new apple comes out i'm like oh yeah i need that my wife's like yep. you got a phone three months ago and i'm like i don't care apple says <laughs> i need it i need it i want it and then i have to figure out some way to sell something on ebay so she doesn't catch me buying this stuff that's like my whole life in a nutshell right there oh love it love it love it well today we are doing something really special at the end for this inaugural episode of the podcast um we are going to give away um, one camera, how many lenses? Two lenses. Two, two lenses and also a flash. And we're gonna talk about, um, we're gonna talk about which cameras and flashes and lenses and all that stuff is in just a minute because we're gonna be talking about the essential gear that every photographer needs and what you don't need but might be nice to have. Um, and uh, we're going to give away the Essential Camera Starter Kit, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But if you want to potentially win that camera starter kit, or the Essential Camera Kit, what, uh, what do we? I forget what we called it. Um, the Essential Starter Kit. That's fine. Are you kidding me? Uh, kidding, are you kidding, kidding yeah. you? Yeah. Kid, yeah, kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to focus in on what's important, and puns are always important. Um, so we're going to be giving that away. Here's how you register to win that. All you need to do is be live. But one other criteria. So, so there's two criteria. All you got to do is be live here. And you guys, we have tons of you guys who are tuning in live. So that's awesome. Thank you all so much for tuning in. If you want to be eligible to win this camera, all you have to do is click that share button uh, for this podcast episode and share it to your Facebook page or profile. Because here's the deal. We just want to help as many people as possible with your photography mentor podcast. And so we want to get the word out that we're starting this podcast. And uh, and so we just want to be as helpful as freaking possible. All right. So that's why I want to ask you to share this um podcast, Facebook Live episode right now on your Facebook profile. And just by doing that, just by sharing it, um, hopefully we'll get more people to be able to on to, to come on to our Facebook Live and we'll be able to help more people out. And, um, and by sharing that, that will register you for the camera giveaway. And you guys have a really good chance because we only have a few hundred people on live at this very moment. So that means you've got a, a one and a couple hundred chance, which is really, really good. The camera that we gave away yesterday, we had 17,000 people register for that. So your chances of winning that camera yesterday weren't as good as the chances that you have right now uh, because there's only a few hundred people and climbing um, on live. So all you have to do to register for this camera giveaway and the two lenses and the flash is just click that share button, share this on your Facebook profile, and then we are gonna randomly draw from one of you guys who clicked that share button and share it on your profile. And one of y'all at the end of this podcast episode will be announced or picked, randomly drawn, whatever, the winner of the camera, two lenses, and the flash. And it's gonna be awesome. I'm ready. I'm, and and if we get a thousand people on right now, David will shave his head. 
Is that, is that my favorite? Am I okay to say that? <laughs> nope. Nope. It is, it, this is this is the brand recognition right here. You know, now nah, Zach did it. Zach did it. It's okay. We're fine. <laughs> Zach Gray did shave his head, but that's because he wasn't blessed with as thick as, as thick of hair as you <clears> and <throat> <I> are. <laughs> Love Zach Gray. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so I'm super excited about that because we're going to give away that camera at the end of this um, podcast episode to one of you guys who share this there, share this live video and are on live. So you guys rock. Thank you all so much. Tons of you guys are saying shared. You guys are amazing. Share it. Share awesome. it because you love us. I mean, the camera is just like a <laughs> secondary like win. I will love you back if you share this video. So question for you, you know, so... There's, there's a lot of people that don't know this about me, and I thought, I thought this would be a kind of a front, fun fact to bring up. Linda had just said, wait a minute, David, is your awesome blue shirt a signature as well? Yes, it is. I wear this same, in, ca in case you guys didn't know, I, I don't wear the exact same shirt every day. I have 30 copies of this exact blue shirt that I wear every single day. So that is kind of one of those things that I do. I started doing that around 10 years ago, and I started doing that because I didn't want to have to get up and make the decision on what to wear. I already had enough enough decisions on how to run my business. You know, it, you know, when you're being a photographer, you have thousands of calculations and decisions that you're making every single time before you click that shutter. I wanted to simplify my life as much as possible, so I decided to wear the same shirt every day. So I literally have about 30 of this exact same shirt, and um, and so it's just an easy decision for me. I wear the same shirt every single day. So that's a little fun fact um, about me. What's a fun fact about you, Rich? Anything? Well, they made they made a cartoon character about this podcast where I was wearing a black shirt. So I literally wear the same exact shirt every day, and it's not even black anymore. It's more like a gray color because it gets washed so much. So, <laughs> but you I'm literally on that wear brand the same. Identity. Do, do you have uh, multiple fun. multiple copies? Oh yeah, or I, you wear the I do okay. now, but I'm not always just V neck. I just wear black because that's what mm. fat people do. Um, mm. I just wear black to look more buff than I actually am. <laughs> um, fun fact about me is I just like to have fun all the time. If it makes me roll my eyes or get like frustrated, I'd rather not do it. So that's mm -hmm. like a weird fun fact. Mm -hmm. So if you book me for a wedding or a shoot and you have fun, it probably won't happen. Yeah. I tell people all the time they get like amazed or I'm like, Oh, I don't, I'm not your photographer. They're like, what? I'm going to pay you. And I'm like, I don't, I don't care. Have a great life. See ya. You know what I mean? It's like funny. <laughs> They're like, yeah, some people aren't worth the money, which that'll be a whole separate podcast. Right. Right. Well, that, that that's awesome. Well, that's so we we both literally wear the same shirts on our own. Like you wear the black one, I wear the the blue one. So super super fun. So, alrighty. Well, hey, let's let's dive in. So today we want to talk about the essential camera gear that every photographer needs, and we thought this would be needs. fun. We actually needs. Okay, needs. Right. Yeah. No. No. We actually are going to distinguish between what a photographer needs and what a photographer does not need. Okay, and uh, we're going to show you some practical examples, and we also have a companion, um, you know, uh, free download that is almost ready, and hopefully we'll, e if you guys are on our email list, we'll email it, and this will be in the show notes, uh, davidmolner.com forward slash 001, once this podcast goes live on iTunes. It's just not ready today for you Facebook Live attendees yet, but we have the essential gear guide, which you guys can download, and it has all of this stuff broken down as well. Um, That'll be available uh, in the show notes, davidmolner.com forward slash 001 um, very soon. So, um, Rich, is, photog is being a great photographer about getting the next greatest, latest camera? Heck no. No. No, no I would agree not. with you. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think being a great photographer has so much more to do with what's going on behind the camera and much less to do with the camera itself. Guys, I just wanna say this. It is a good day to be alive for a lot of reasons. It is a good day, time and age, to be a photographer. You guys just have no idea how freaking, I will say freaking a lot on this site or on this on this podcast. So apologize ahead of time. I'm a freaking freak. All right, you have no freaking idea how lucky you are, how blessed you are to be able to have a $400, $500 camera that just 
blows it out of the water. That is just so incredible, okay? Because when I started out being a professional photographer, I had to spend $1,000, $2,000 on a camera, and those cameras sucked, sucked. I'm going to say it again. They sucked compared to you know, the four or $500 cameras today. This is a, this one right here, this is a Canon Rebel T6, okay? I think this is like 400 bucks when it came out, probably cheaper than that now, that it's a little bit older of a model. This camera is absolutely incredible. It is amazing compared to um, the Nikon D70 that I started out with. Now, I'm not talking about you know, I, I'm a big fan of Nikon, Canon, Sony, and, and several other brands, so I'm not talking about Nikon being bad. I'm saying that camera 14, 15, 16 years ago was one of the first digital cameras that I personally owned, the Nikon D70, and it sucked. Like, it sucked compared to a $400 camera these days. So what I'm trying to say is it is a good time to be alive. I just wanna say that first and foremost. If you have a camera that was made in the last four or five years, you are blessed, you are lucky, okay? You don't have to buy you know, $10,000 worth of camera gear and the latest, greatest L-series lenses to be a great photographer, okay? You don't always need the latest gear. A new lens, a new piece of gear is not going to make you an amazing world-class photographer. What is gonna make you a world-class photographer is understanding the fundamentals of how photography works and then going and practicing, okay? Doing practice challenges, doing real assignments, real gigs, whatever it is, taking those photos and learning how to master your craft as a photographer. That is what is gonna make you, my dear friends, a fantastic, you too, Rich, you too, uh, a great photographer not the gear. So I just wanted to say that, I wanna preface this, we're gonna be talking about gear a bunch in this, in this episode of the podcast, but I just want you guys to understand that it is so much more about you and what you think and your vision and your creativity and understanding the fundamentals of how your camera works and then putting it into practice. It is so much more about what you do and what you think as the photographer, so much more important than which camera you have. Whether you have a camera like this Canon 5D Mark II that is 10 years old or something, or if you have a Mark IV that is only a few years old, you know, or if you have a $400 kit camera like this, it's so much more important that you, uh, like, so what's going on in your head is so much more important than which cameras you have. I can guarantee you, okay, that a new photographer who has this setup, my 5D Mark IV with another $2,000, $1,700 camera lens right here. This is, you know, I don't even know what this is, four grand worth of, of uh, photography gear at the moment, current market value. Um, I can guarantee you that Rich Coleman, this amazing professional photographer, the one that I trust to shoot my family portraits, this guy right here, my co-host, I can guarantee you that if you put up a new photographer that had this 4,000 or even $20,000 worth of camera gear, and you gave Rich this, you know, this, you know, three-year-old Canon Rebel T6 that was, you know, four hundred dollars when it all came out. Now you could probably buy it for a few hundred bucks. I guarantee you, if you gave Rich this camera, he would blow the new photographer with twenty thousand dollars worth of gear out of the water. He would, he would create shots that are so much more amazing than that newbie. So what I'm trying to say is, what is important is the photographer, not the gear. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Now, one thing, one thing, my buddy, my buddy Ryan Moser always says is a poor craftsman blames his tools, mm. and I feel like it's really easy. Like when you get discouraged, you're like, "Oh, I need, I need the next thing. I need the next piece of gear. Like my pictures aren't up." But you are the most important piece of equipment you have as far as the knowledge you learn makes the photos. You know, nobody asked Pablo Picasso what brand or type of brush he used mm. the dude put the brush in paint and made a painting so it doesn't matter if you're canon nikon sony fuji none of that matters mm. it matters you have to consider yourself an artist and i feel i feel like for a real big issue in photography right now is it's just one of those things people start doing and they don't consider it art photography mm. 
I went to college for it. So I went to art school for photography. Photography is art. You have to treat it with like the respect that an artist treats a canvas. They don't just like throw paint and not look and loosely let their auto settings paint that canvas. They right. think about what they're doing. They they purposely put the brush on canvas and make something beautiful. And that's what we're doing with, with cameras. Mm. Absolutely. Your your camera is your paintbrush. I love that. Yeah. That's fan that's fantastic. I, I you know, it annoys me to no end, and I'm sure many of you guys have seen this or experienced this. Um, but uh, when people say, Man, that's such a great photo, you must have a great camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ah like frustrates me so much. Or people or like I show them you know what's really funny is like when I'm when I show people like I'm like showing off a picture from a vacation or something and I'm like I'm like oh yeah this place was stunning you have to see it and I show them this picture and like wow that's incredible you must have you have a what camera do you have you know there's other automatically asking me what camera do I have you know and they're just like man I just wish I could take good photos but I just I really need a good camera if I had a dollar for how many times people have told me that I would have been like, you know, I would have had gazillions of dollars by now. But here's the funny thing is they're like, man, it, I just need a new camera so I can take photos of like, like that. I'm like, I took that photo with my two year old iPhone. Yeah. Take that. <laughs> sucker. I, I know. And, and I'm like, you don't need a new camera. You need to learn. You need to freaking learn how to use the camera that you already have. And if you don't have yeah. one, then we have some recommendations for what camera gear that you should get. But it's so much more important to learn how to master your camera, you know? So I, I wanted to kind of share this with you guys, you know, so we, so Rich and I are both mentors in our amazing membership community that's called the Photo Mentorship. You can check it out at thephotomentorship.com. I know a ton of you guys who are on live right now are currently members of the Photo Mentorship. But the Photo Mentorship is where you get unlimited access to all of our courses and all of our training, including um, kind of the, the most viewed course that I've ever made. It's called Master Your Camera. And in that course, we teach you step by step how to take full manual control of your camera so that you can always shoot the images that you see in your head. So that course is exactly what you need to learn how to use whichever camera it is that you have, okay? So it's so much more about learning how to master your camera than it is about just getting the new Canon R5, which I do wanna get, selfishly. We'll both you know? get it. We'll both yeah, get yeah, it. yeah, we'll both get yeah. it. We'll both you get, get a camera. And we'll, we'll give, give one away. What? Yeah, yeah. maybe, we'll, maybe we'll, yeah, we'll probably give a, <laughs> away a Canon R5. That would be really fun. So I think it comes out in three or four months. So we can probably do that um, for and, you guys. And one great thing inside the photo mentorship too, it kind of started out as like my audition to work with David Molnar, <laughs> like before he trusted me. You, you passed. Um, I took, we, we did a poll of our students said, what cameras do you guys have? And mm -hmm. B&H, which is one of our great partners that we love, shipped yeah. me all these cameras. It was literally a crop ton of photos and uh -huh. i walk around the entire camera and i tell you what every button does and mm. why you would need to use it and those yep. are like some very very like you know something that you know i'll take for granted because i've been using the systems forever but when people are like oh that's how you change that or oh that's that button i'm oh my eyepiece has been out of focus for six years and it's like yes like i love being able to help people and mm. that's what this podcast is for and that's really what the photo mentorship is all about it's just you can achieve photography dreams. Like I did it on my own. Mm. I was lucky enough to have David like help me from afar, mm. but you guys can get there a lot quicker with things like this podcast, which so it's super fun. Yeah. Love it. Hey, I got another example for you, man. That is an amazing book that you wrote. What kind of pen do you have? Boom. There you, you go. Must have, you must have a nice typewriter. <laughs> like I was an, I was an man, Stephen King. He must have a great typewriter. You know, like he's, his books are great, you know? Yeah. No, it's about the artist themselves. So Rich, should we talk about it's, some gear? Sorry, Yeah, we could, uh, but I, I want to say one more thing because I yeah. say this a lot. It's annoying, but could people get frustrated with like the neighborhood photographers or like, mm. oh, my neighbor's a photographer now. I'm going to be jealous. And my advice is always look up, not over. Mm. Look up towards somebody, not over at your competition. That's just huge for me. But mm. if my neighbor, who's a, who's a cook at a restaurant, bought a brand new tool chest full of every tool in the world. Could he fix the engine on my car? 
just because he has all the right tools. Mm. If he bought a scalpel, would I let him do open heart surgery on me? No. I'm going to trust the person that knows how to do that. Depends I'll trust on how the guy. Desperate I am. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'll trust I'll trust the guy fixing it with vice grips and duct tape that knows what they're doing. Like they're going to do a better job with no tools than the best tools in the wrong hands. So like mm. that's all I have to say about gear and gear envy because that seems to be such a big issue with us is gear envy. It's not the yeah. gear. It's the photographer. Mm, love it. It's not about the but camera. If, but if you don't have a camera, what do you suggest, David? Well, that's a great segue into it. Uh, but I just want to, yeah, I want to like cement this moment right now. It's not about the camera. It's about you as the photographer. It's not about the camera. So there you go. Maybe we need a t-shirt that says it's not about the camera. Um, okay, so let's talk about our essential gear that we recommend for every, that every photographer needs. So first of all, you do need a camera. Okay, and we're gonna make some specific camera recommendations and we're gonna have that download guide. Hey, for the, all of you guys, by the way, real quick, just wanna say this, we are giving away a camera at the end of this podcast episode to one of you guys who are on live right now. All you need to do to register for that camera giveaway is just share this Facebook Live on your Facebook profile or your Facebook page and that will instantly register you for this giveaway. We're just trying to get the word out about our brand new podcast. So if you could do us a favor and share that, that would be amazing. And just in doing that, you get to register for the camera, two lenses and flash giveaway that we're gonna be doing at the end. So super excited about that. All right, so here's a couple things that you need, all right? as as a photographer. And in fact, this is what I had in the very beginning. When I first shot my very first weddings uh, as a professional photographer, I had a camera and I had two lenses, okay? And in fact, they're the same two lenses that I'm gonna give away, that we are gonna give away today at the end of this, okay? Because they're what's essential to be able to do what you want to do. Now, there are all sorts of different specialties in photography, okay? So today we're gonna talk about some, you know, some generic starting places. But we're gonna talk about some, you know, not generic, but essential gear that every photographer needs starting out and why some of you guys might need to purchase additional gear that's not expensive, but can help take and elevate your photography to, to a new level. So here's the essential gear. Number one, you need a camera, okay? You do need a camera, and preferably it's a camera uh, that was made in the last, you know, four or five years, okay? Now, it's okay if you have an older camera and it's still working great. I'm not saying that it, a nine-year-old camera couldn't work great, but, you know, my recommendation would be to have a camera that's, you know, within the last five years, approximately. I don't know, would you say something And different? And the reason is te technology gets so great. So, like, if you have, like, an eight, nine, ten-year-old camera, mm -hmm. before you invest more money into lenses and flash and stuff like that, I would recommend... The image processor, the computer of your camera, of your camera, gets so much smarter. You're able to do a lot of things like shoot in lower light and have a higher ISO. So, mm -hmm. it's not necessary, but man, it's like getting a brand new car. You're like, oh wow, they all have backup cameras. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, my heat, my seat's heated. So there's right. a lot of great features and function, but it's not necessary if if exactly. you have. And, and the camera we're recommending actually isn't the newest camera. It's just a great price starting point too if that yep well it's helps. a pretty new one but but yeah you're right yeah it's not the newest one that that's coming out that's awesome um no that's great and that's a great analogy it's like do you need heated seats to get to your location no you don't are they nice to have when it's snowing out yes they are okay and so that that's a great analogy the heated seats you know so you're a lot welcome of the newer, the newer, yeah that's awesome we're turning up the heat here that's awesome um well um take a seat because we're about to make some recommendations um, so you need, you know, you need a camera that's, that's decent. Okay. And the other thing you need is you need a good versatile lens, a lens that can go from wide angle to zoomed in. Okay. From wide to zoomed in. And, uh, yeah. And so it's a, it's a zoom lens. A zoom lens is a lens that actually can zoom from wide to, to, you know, to telephoto to up close. Okay. A fixed lens is a lens, let's say like this, that doesn't actually zoom. It stays like its focal length stays in place. Okay. Um, the second thing you need is you need a lens. Okay. That can shoot in low light situations. All right. And so I'm just going to go ahead and show this right now. This is the nifty 50. Okay. This lens, here's the Canon version, uh, right here. This is the Sony version and there's Nikon versions and probably a version for every single camera brand that's out there. Okay. But, um, the, the 50 millimeter lens, um, 
allows you to open up the size of the hole that's inside the lens, which is called the aperture. Now we talk about this stuff extensively in the Master Your Camera course, which is available to all of our photo mentorship students, okay? But the way that it works, if you're watching this video podcast, all right, this is actually an old Nikon version of this, is that when you open up the aperture, which is the size of the hole, to a larger size, to a physically larger size like this, more light can come in to your frame to expose your camera sensor and it allows you to capture pictures in lower light situations like indoors or in a gym or just on a dark cloudy day. So having a 50 millimeter lens or a lens like this that is fixed that can allow you to open up your aperture to a large physical size, okay? that will allow you to shoot in lower light situations. So one of the first recommendations that I'm gonna make is that you guys get a nifty 50 lens. And the good news is it's pretty inexpensive. You can find these lenses for around 125 bucks uh, current current price. Now prices currently. fluctuate. <laughs> currently, pri prices fluctuate. In a couple of years from now, you'll be like, why is it $700? I'm like, inflation, you know. Um, but anyways, the 50 millimeter lens is a very inexpensive lens and it is amazing it's an amazing quality lens. This is a 50 millimeter, 1.8 millimeter lens, and um, or f 1.8, and it, it's an amazing lens for low quality. Sorry, not low quality for low whoa, light. Whoa. Yeah, whoa, yeah, blunder. I love edit, low. I edit. love low quality photos. I love low quality photos. That's why I like to shoot with my iPhone a whole lot. <laughs> oh um, gosh, Apple. Just kidding, uh, Apple. We love you. Yeah, no, no. It's it's a good idea to stay at 12 megapixels for like eight years. It's good. It's good. Um, mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, I do love the iPhone. It's awesome. I wrote a book called iPhone Only Photography years ago. It's 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 a wonderful thing. It's a camera that you always have in your pocket available to you. But it's not as good quality as even like a camera like this, you know, Rebel T6. Okay, so let's go ahead and and, and look at a couple other things here. So we've got. I'm going to take this off the tripod if I can. Turn turning this around. Here is a you know Rebel T6. This camera came out a couple of years ago at this point, and it has a um, a kit lens on it. It goes from 18 over here to 55. Okay, now anything below 50 millimeters is technically um, you know a little bit wider. Okay, you know typically the way that it works is any uh, lower number on your zoom lens is gonna be a wider angle lens. And as you get above 50 millimeters, it's going to start zooming in, okay? And getting you closer to your subject at that point. So the beautiful thing about this lens, the kit lens that comes with a lot of your cameras, uh, typically, you know, like it comes in a $400 camera kit um, for something like the Canon Rebel T7, um, is that it can go wide angle and it can zoom in, which is wonderful because it's versatile. But here's the catch, Rich. What's the catch on this on this type of lens? Do you like? What do you think? The aperture, the aperture on that lens does is not great, which means a not a lot of light can go into the camera because the yep. aperture is high, meaning the hole is small, meaning less light comes in. Yep. So, so when less light comes in, you get a worse depth of field, you get a lot more limitations. Yeah, you have a lot of limitations. So the, the thing about this lens that so many of you guys have uh, that comes with your camera, you know, whether it's the Canon, Nikon, or Sony, there's like this 18 to 55 version or something very similar, um, is that, in, in a quick synopsis is this, is that it's inexpensively made and it is great for outdoor photos. So if you're shooting landscapes or if you're shooting portraits or anything outdoors where light is good, this lens, this kit lens, the 1855 works great when there is good light, but it sucks in low light situations. That's the easiest way to explain it because the physical like size of the hole inside the lens cannot open up very large. Okay, so, and there's some other factors that we won't go super into at this moment. Well, I'm, I'm gonna say something and I'm gonna kind of argue with you for a second because it's my it. favorite. Love um, it, argue. Like, I'm a firm believer that like that lens is only good at 18 or 55. Mm. Like all the other variables in between are pretty much garbage. Um, and that's not be, being mean, that's just from experience. Even my L series lenses, my 7200, I only like at 70 or 200. Oh, I just feel like I get, I get a lot sharper of an image all the way like if i'm at 160 
I'm learning something new here, folks. Rich Coleman yeah, is a I mean, genius. Try that out. Like when you're going back and looking at your raw files in Lightroom, you're like, I almost always go with the one that's zoomed all the way in or mm. all the way out. Interesting. And I don't know if it's because the mechanics are tighter and it's actually not moving. I don't know if it's just like another variable for like that camera I, shake. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know that I've ever like put words to it or actually ever realized that, but you're probably right. Probably most of the images that I think are the sharpest and like kind of the clearest, best quality are probably at those maximums or minimums, like the 18 or the 55 or the 70 or the 200, if it's a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Point being is this same lens right here can go wide angle at 18 and you can zoom all the way in at 55. And it's gonna be good for outdoor portraits or portraits or you know photos in good light, but it's not gonna be good when there's low light. So if you're trying to use that lens and you're trying to shoot photos indoors, you're gonna be a little bit, you're gonna be limited in the amount of light that you can allow to expose your images sensor inside of your camera. So it's a little bit, there's just some bigger limitations um, to that 18 to 55 lens. But that's when you bring in the 50 millimeter um, fixed lens. So anytime you get a fixed lens like this, there's less moving parts. And what these lenses, like what the manufacturers can do in these lenses is allow for you to have a larger aperture size allowing more light to come in. So if you're watching this live, you can see that, you know, at this moment, this is about what that kit lens will allow you to do. It'll, it'll allow this much light in. But the fixed lens, like a 50, will allow you to go here which lets a lot more light in. And so the reason I recommend this is be this lens is because it's very inexpensive. It, quite frankly, it's the same lens that I used starting out to shoot probably the first 10 professional um, photo shoots that I did, including weddings kind of all over the country. Um, I used this, you know, 125, it was probably a hundred dollars back then, uh, lens and got great quality portraits and got hired to shoot weddings um, like all over the world because of photos that I shot with this $125 lens that allowed me to shoot in low light situations. And what's the other most amazing things, uh, thing that you can do when you shoot uh, wide open or at a large size aperture? What's one of the other main benefits for you, Rich? I like the shallow depth of field, meaning Boom. that creamy that creamy background, or people call it bokeh, mm -hmm. um, just a softer image, the amount of light comes in, gives you a lot shallower of a depth of field, meaning the model or the bride or the subject or the fruit will be in focus and everything behind it will be nice and soft and blurry on purpose. Mm. So that's why professionals, and I'll say semi-pros, we have this problem all the time where we'll shoot too low. We'll, we'll like go the wrong way. Mm. We're like, right. I'm going to shoot everything at 1.2 because I can. And then we miss focus and then we get mad at our gear yep. because we did something wrong. But yes, we love the fact that it can go to such a low aperture. It just kind of gives you extra time, extra performance in your camera because your ISO isn't so high and it just lets you get what's in your head out on paper. And that's why we like shooting with a lower aperture. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna um, talk a little bit about what he means by a lower aperture. So with aperture um, and this is something we teach and demonstrate extensively in that Master Your Camera course I was talking about. But like this lens right here is a uh, 50 millimeter 1.8. And what that means is that the physical size of the hole, um, when it's the largest, is at 1.8, okay? And as the hole gets smaller, the number is actually getting larger. So it's the exact opposite of what you would expect you know, the numbers to, to be, you know, correlated. So basically it's this, when you're talking about aperture, which is the size of the hole in your lens, that smaller number is actually a larger hole, okay? And the larger aperture or f-stop number, it's actually a smaller hole, which allows less light to come in, okay? So when we say shoot at an f 1.8 or buy that 50 millimeter f 1.8, we're saying that because the lens allows you to open up the size of the hole inside the lens to a larger size, which allows you to shoot in lower light situations and spoiler alert, allows you to blur the background more while keeping your subjects crisp and in focus. Okay, Man, that'd be a great lens to give away. Oh yeah, well speaking of which, Let's talk about what we're going to be giving away as the essential car starter kit. What, you want to do it, Rich? What camera we're, are we? We're going to give a, We're going to give away the Canon T7 and its kit lens. Is Boom. it eighteen to fifty-five? Is that right? Boom. Yep. I need like 
I need like a DJ board like full of sounds. That'd be so fun yeah. for me. Whoa, 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 yeah, well, whoa, production whoa. production will increase in episode two. You know, <laughs> I want I want a fog machine or else. Um, yeah. So we're giving away that <laughs> camera, which is an awesome camera. Uh, I've I reviewed it for the photo mentorship, and like the whole time I was telling our students like. I started with an XCI that sucked, and this thing is great. Like, oh, it's incredible. Yeah. Oh, it's stupid. Yeah. Like, I flew to California to shoot a wedding, and I had two XTIs, which are like its ten-year-old little or older brother. And ten, yeah, ten-year-old version of this, right? Yeah, ten or fifteen-year version. Yeah, it's just yeah. way back. And we were seven it was, when it came out. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. I'm getting old. I'm gonna die soon. Yeah. Um, oh, but gosh. I was able to go and shoot all over the country with a Canon XTI and like I kind of had to be like afraid of that when somebody showed up at the wedding with a better camera than me like the uncle had a better camera I'd like hide it or put mm. gaff tape over the logo but now that <laughs> T7 is a freaking phenomenal camera like it's so stupid how well it performs it and makes that's me so mad it actually oh, makes me away, mad we gave because... away an Ari yesterday so it's not like we're camera shaming or like yeah bolstering this camera it's just like unbelievable what you can get value wise like when i value rated that i was like this is a five out of five stars but if i could give it seven i'd give it seven like yeah you're getting so much punch packed into a little camera it's it's kind of unbelievable mm -hmm. so we're giving that away and the 50 the 50 millimeter lens that we we're just talking about lens that we yep. love and so you're getting these two things so the camera lens that comes with it and this 50 millimeter lens and what else and a speed light, the Yunyuo YN 560 full speed. I think you speed. say it Yong. I think you're Yong in Yang. the way that you pronounce it. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm very Yong. But um, we're giving away the camera starter kit. Forever so you're getting Yong. Sorry. The camera, two yep. lenses, and a flash, which is everything you need. Number one, it's kind of everything you need to start a business. Yep. But it's everything you need photography to business. learn photography. Yeah contractor that's how you become a mechanic you just buy a really <laughs> this good is camera. the hammer that you use to start your contracting business you know what i mean yes no that's uh plastic it will break um but yeah it's 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 exciting and I, i'm i'm excited for whoever wins it to share some pictures they took and oh yeah to watch them grow it's so fun because i mean with that setup right there it, it's going to take you a while to outgrow that mm. into our next category which is coming up but it's like super fun to watch somebody win that i love giving away stuff we should do it every week Oh, we are going to give away stuff every single week live here on the every podcast. Every week live. Uh. Live on the podcast. You so got you're light, light comments. What do you want? Do you want tripods? Do you want bags? Do you want memory cards? Do you, What do you want? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm going to buy it on David's credit card and send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm even going to send like some of our favorite listeners like a blue V-neck, my favorite blue V-neck. That's what we should do. Um, but we'll give them camera gear too, you know, but I mean, this is pretty essential camera gear. So we we'll have to put a link for people to be able to get that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so yeah, that's we can awesome. see what sells for black or blue. Ooh, prob mm, probably, probably mine would blew it out of the water or blew yours wow. out of the water. There you go. There's a, there's those muscles. Love it. Love it. Okay. So the essential camera starter kit is just simply getting, you know, your camera with a, with a, um, uh, kit, lens. kit lens. And now there's the Nikon version and the Sony version as well. And in the uh, the companion essential gear guide that we're going to make available for download on davidmolnar.com forward slash 001 by the time this I, this episode airs on iTunes. Um, it's about the equivalent of a Nikon D3500 or Sony A6000. Yep. Love it. I'll, yeah. just, I'll just let you know for people listening. So, so Rich has done a great job um, getting together this this uh, ebook with all like kind of with our essential gear guide stuff, and it has comparisons. So if you're a Nikon shooter, it shows you okay. If we were talking about a Canon camera, here's all the com here's all the comparable lenses and gear specifically for Nikon and specifically for Sony, etc. So it's going to be really amazing. So if you haven't downloaded that gear guide and uh, and you're listening to this, go to davidmolnar.com forward slash zero zero one because this is episode one. All right, so that's the essential gear. Um, at the, essential. Like the, essentially the start, that's right the starting out and then we have what's the what's our next level after that rich the next level would be the semi-pro kit mm, which semi -pro i kit. think yeah i mean it's the semi-pro to pro kit like with the semi-pro kit we're about to talk about you should be able to shoot anything your yep. gear is 100 percent not limiting you at this point mm. it's just other stuff would be nice what would be I limiting you at this point what would limit me at this point? 
Not you. I mean, like, I what would lim- what, <laughs> you're just un- you're I, limitless. I yeah. would just like you know better glass. Like well, you, you'll hear me mm-hmm. say that a lot, and that's just uh, good glass in the lens, sharp images, you know, things like that, or more like more features. Like okay, I have a backup camera and heated seats, but do I want air conditioning seats too? Mm. Do I want a heated steering wheel? Mm. Should I get a sunroof? Like that's what that's what we're talking about here. I'm already mm. driving a Lexus. I'm just trying to get it decked out. So we're going to talk about you drive the a Lexus. <laughs> like, I drive wow. a Kia, bro. I work okay. for you. I drive a Kia. So <laughs> no, but we're going to talk about the give this guy a raise. Kit. Yeah. <laughs> well, or just a job you pick. But uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about the Semi Pro Kit, and this is around three thousand dollars. So everything we're talking to you now. Now we just went from six hundred dollars. Yeah. To three thousand dollars. This whole kit is about six hundred bucks, right? Yes. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So the next set of gear we're talking about is going to be more like 3000, but that 50 millimeter lens comes with you. That flash comes with you. Mm. So the cool thing about sticking and having brand, um, continuity, like, yeah, continuity or like sticking with it. Love is Mm -hmm. that lenses are compatible and you can keep, it can grow with you. Right. Um, For the most part, there are some exceptions. I I want you to talk about this camera because you say something pretty funny about this camera. Um, so the Semi Pro Kit camera, do you remember what that is? Yes, it's the 60 Mark II. Yes. Okay, sweet. I was like, I don't have it in front of me. You can, you can, no, pull, up the gear guide. You can pull up the gear guide in front of you if you want. We can show our students I have, live. I have it. I was just testing you. Was oh, okay, testing you. sweet, sweet, sweet. I mean, you um, can yeah, share my screen if you want. I don't care. Yeah, sure. It's this, It's the 60 Mark II, and I actually was thinking about that this morning. I forgot to bring it to my uh, studio, but um, it's the camera that I bought uh, specifically for my wife and I to keep at the house at all times because there's sometimes I don't bring my camera from the studio back to the house but we have the 6D Mark II available at all times and so I do I actually have done a lot of professional shoots with the 6D Mark II and we shoot all of our you know portraits around the house or if we you know go to the beach or something like that that's our go-to camera um, for uh, photographing you know our lives and you know like I said quite frankly I've done lots and lots of professional shoots with the 6D Mark II as well. So one of the big differences between the 6D Mark II and a camera like your um, Canon Rebel T7 or T6 or XTI, whatever, um, is that the um, the these Rebels are cropped sensors. Okay. Now I don't want to take a lot of time talking about crop sensors, but essentially what it does is if you have you know if your picture on a full frame camera. Um, like a 5D Mark IV or this new 6D Mark II that we're talking about, or the Canon R um, or the Nikon or Canon uh, Sony equivalents, is that, you know, if, imagine if this is your picture right here on a full frame camera. Well, the crop sensor is literally going to crop. Are you, are you about to give, give me a demonstration? Perfect. Look I, at, Rich, well, yeah, look at I'm, Rich's I'm gonna, screen. I'm going to stop. Right. Can you see me? I don't know if you can yep. see me, but. Yeah, so this can. is your crop sensor. This is your T7, T7i, XTI. T6, whatever letters Canon want to make, and right. this is your full frame sensor. So if right. you look at it's them larger. compared to each other, you're getting a lot more information. Mm-hmm. You're getting a lot more colors. You're getting a lot more contrast. You're getting a lot mm-hmm. more blacks. So you're mm-hmm. getting a lot more data on your sensor, which is like film. So when you hear us talk about sensor, it used to be film that the shutter open, light burns the image onto film. Now the shutter opens and information gets put on your sensor. So you can either right. have a crop sensor or a full frame sensor. Right. So that's like a, a really quick visual for crop sensor and full frame. So I had to rip post-it notes in two different colors to get that for you. No, but I, I love did it, it, man. I'm so glad. Yeah. I'm so glad you did that. That's uh, that's that's amazing. So. Um, yeah, that, 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 that's a great visual. And for those of you guys who are just listening, we essentially had a bigger post-it note and a smaller version of a different color post-it note so that you can see that one camera is recording more information and the other one is recording less. Um, it's literally cropping the picture in closer. Um, so that, that's also just another way to think about it. And it's so, a crop, it's a crop ton less information. Yeah, it's a crop ton, man. Uh, <laughs> Well, this this podcast episode is getting really crappy, you know. Hopefully, hopefully we don't get hopefully we don't get crappy reviews. Leave us a review on iTunes. Don't make it a crappy Please. one. Please, yeah. uh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Oh, okay. So the 6D Mark II is a full frame camera, and quite frankly, 
it's um you know it's it's actually newer than my 5d mark IV, which is kind of like my workhorse camera um it's the one that you know i shoot album covers and, and stuff like that with but the 6d mark ii if i was to say what is the best bang for your buck i would say that it is the 6d um, Mark II. So I'm going to share Rich's screen here for those of you guys watching, and he's going to show you some stuff on the screen. I I believe it looks yeah, like a pretty. What's that? I said that's kind of how it works, but yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I see I see a really pretty picture of the stars and a plane in the background. Are you serious? Yeah, that's what I see. Oh man, I have it open. That's hilarious. I'm sharing my screen and I have it normal. That's a plane. Okay. That's a picture I took in Iceland. So you're welcome Ooh, for that. Maybe- Maybe we should go there. Um, so maybe what? Maybe you're sharing the opposite monitor that you're using at the moment. Not sure. I'll turn it off. Sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. All good. All good. All good in the hood. So, um, so the 6D Mark II is an amazing camera, and it really, here's the thing: it's a it's a it's a full frame camera and it has an amazing amount of megapixels an amazing quality it's great for focusing and it's just you know super super incre- super incredible um, I think the 6D Mark II as a Canon camera, now we can talk about the equivalents for the Nikon and the Sony as well, we talk about that extensively inside the gear guide, um, but I think that the 6D Mark II for Canon is kind of the best bang for your buck. Okay, um, the you know it's around fifteen hundred dollars more or less. It's kind of gone up and down right around that range. Um, maybe it's a little less at the moment, but I just think it's an amazing value. Because keep in mind, when I bought my five D Mark IV, which is a full frame camera, it was like thirty seven hundred dollars when I bought it a few years ago. Okay, so the six D Mark II is absolutely incredible. What else do we currently have? Cur- currently thirteen ninety nine on bnhphoto.com. Boom, boom sauce. That's awesome. Uh, well, we also have that same flash because I will say that I hate Canon and Nikon flashes because they don't work. I'm um, sorry if that makes me a mean guy, but they just don't work as good as this Yunyo flash that I love. Um, so there's that, that, that same flash from that Yang, you know, um, flash. And then there's a little bit of an upgrade for the 50 millimeter lens on this kit. Now, okay. David, have you ever owned the 51.4? I have, but I don't currently have it in, in my possession. I have I have owned and broke that lens three or four times. Really? So true story. I probably owned that lens and repurchased it more than any other lens I've ever owned. Um, okay. It's great. The fifty one four. I, I mean, I'm going to be mean for a second, David. Mm-hmm. It's not an L lens, but you give me that fifty one four or the fifty one two. Yeah. I'm going to give you a pretty similar result. I don't think there's for it to be a sixteen hundred dollar price difference, I don't think there's sixteen hundred dollars of difference in that camera lens. Are you is challenging that... me to a shoot off, Rich? Is that what you're doing? Uh, I might be. I'm game. I'm game if you're game. I just I think it's <laughs> I think it's ridiculous fun. that the one two is so expensive compared to Ooh. the one four, and I get great results. Now it's a big jump from the one eight to the one four as mm. far as quality. Not the biggest jump in the world, in my opinion, having owned all three of these lenses. From the one four to the one two. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I let's do challenge. Game on. Game on. Ch- challenge accepted. Um, let's do this. Let's like on one of the one of the coming up episodes. We should do like we'll shoot the best portrait we can um, from. Uh, I think I think the students would think it was fun too. Like we'll shoot the best. I'll shoot the best portrait I can with the fifty one two, <laughs> and you shoot the best portrait you can with the fifty one four. And Same then we'll camera. Let our, we'll, we'll let our. Say, which camera are we using? I don't care. We'd use a Mark IV. Okay. Or I'll cool. we'll use a T7. That'd be even funner. More fun. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Or something like that. Like something obtainable. And we should maybe do it in Norway. We'll hire the same model, same day, same lighting situation. Ooh. That would be fun. That'd be a fun. Like a shoot off. A shoot off challenge. That'd a live shoot off. How I got the shot challenge. Boom. Love it. So that the, so the, those how I got the shot episodes are available to our TPM, which stands for the Photo Mentorship Students. So we have episodes where we actually show you step by step how we actually took a photo. So that's it. That that challenge will be aired there because we're going to challenge Norway. Challenge accepted. Ch- challenge accepted. I love that show, man. That was You're so that great. Tammy. He said we're going to Norway three times in this episode. 
<laughs> so Tammy, let us go to Norway. No, my yeah. wife, my wife and I were like trying to, we're trying to figure out dates for when Rich and I can go to Norway and my wife can watch all four kids by herself. Um, so I'm not going to publicly say which what what dates those are, but we're really excited about that because Rich. Can you and tell I, us your address too? I mean, why we're at it? <laughs> yes, and my social security number is. Uh, but uh, yeah, no. So we're we're going to go to Norway, um, hopefully in a couple months from now, or less than a couple months from now, and film a new course, a new landscape photography course that will be available to all of our photo mentorship students um, as just part of their membership. And uh, and then I guess we're going to do a shoot off now to see you know to do this lens thing. Um, so that sounds like that sounds like a blast. And we're gonna give something away. The winner gets always. to pick to give something away. Why not? Always, always. Maybe we'll give away the 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 one four or something like that. The the Canon fifty one four. All right, awesome. I'm gonna share my screen a little bit, and I can show this uh, the starter guide here. Um, you see that? Oh, I guess. I'm wait. I, I'm on a, I'm I, a, I'm I, a twenty second delay. Hold on. <laughs> so here's the semi here's the semi pro kit. Um, and so we have the 60 Mark IV, sorry, 60 Mark II. <laughs> like, there's no Mark IV for the 60 yet. And then we have the it would be awesome. Flash. Yeah. And we have the 51.4, which you could, of course, use your 50 millimeter 1.8 if you wanted to. It would work just fine. Um, the 1.4 is probably about $250, $300 more approximately. Um, but when you compare that to the 50 millimeter, 1.2, which is more like 1600 ish dollars approximately at this time. Uh, the 1.4 is a really great value, and Rich thinks it's not much worse um, quality than the 1.2, but that's why we're going to do the shoot off. That'd be a lot of fun. And there's comparable brands if you're looking at that. This is what we're going to email you out later, or you can download later. So yep. there's comparable lenses on the bottoms of all these descriptions. Yep, yep. And so the next lens, uh, do you have this lens, Rich, or do I just have it? Do I hate it. You hate it? Really? I hate, hate that. It? Yeah, no, weird. Isn't that funny? I just don't. I've owned it and got rid of it. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I, you know, so I, I never had the older version of it, but the version two of the Canon 24 to 70 millimeter lens, I am just in love with. It's, uh, quite frankly, it's pretty, pretty freaking incredible. Um, here, here it is. Here's the, the 24 to 70. So it goes 24 and it goes all the way over here to 70. And on a full frame camera like this, I'm gonna kind of repeat this. A full frame camera, 50 millimeters, you know, like that 50 millimeter lens is what you and I see with our eyes. It's not zoomed in and it's not zoomed out. So 50 millimeters is, is like normal focal range. It's like when you're talking to someone across the table, you're looking, your eyes are basically 50 millimeters. Now, the moment you start going to a lower number, it starts going wider. So if you go to 49, which is one millimeter less than 50, it starts getting a little bit wider. Now, the moment you start zooming in a little bit or you go to a higher number, like 51 millimeters, that's when it starts zooming in a little teeny bit and uh, you start getting closer to your subject. So it's as if you were leaning in across the table, getting closer, right? So the 24 to 70, what it does is it goes as wide as 24, which is great for landscapes, it's incredible, and, um, and it can zoom in to 70, which is not like a crazy up close zoom, but it's enough that it's perfect for portraits. But here is the, the zinger, okay? The, the glass, the quality is just incredible. Now, do you need it to take pro quality photos? Heck no, I didn't actually have this lens until about three or four years ago, okay? Um, I, took, I took images um, for all sorts of places. I shot my first, you know, like probably 10 weddings with the kit lens that I'm recommending to you, just an older version of it. So it was even crappier. So basically the lenses and, and cameras and stuff we're recommending to you now, it's like you're in such better shape than we were when we started out, you know, well over a decade ago. Okay, so this lens is incredible. Here's the, fa here's the, the kicker is that on the on the um, the kit lens that comes you know in the starter kit, here's the thing, you know I said it's limited on the the size of the aperture, the size of the hole, like the amount of light that this lens lets in. Um, the limitations on this lens are that its maximum aperture is uh, what is it 3.5 I think it's, it's 3.5 3. to 5.6. It's 3.5 when it's zoomed out wide, meaning you can open up the hole to a medium-ish size hole at 3.5. Not medium, but a little better than medium size hole at 3.5. But when it's all the way zoomed in, it's going to automatically limit you to having the maximum, the most light it will let in is a smaller hole at 6.5. And so what, what that means is as you zoom in, if you're like in a gym and you're photographing, you know, your kid's volleyball game or whatever it is, and you're zooming in, it's basically like the, the, the low light quality is getting worse and worse 
with a lens like this indoors. That's why I say it's not a good indoor lens. Guess what, folks? The 24 to 70, it's expensive. You know, 15, 16, 1700 bucks, whatever the price is now, it is expensive. But the, keep in mind, we're recommending this for the semi-pro. Those of you guys who have an you know extra budget to spend for you know photography gear, maybe you're making some money on the weekends and you can't invest. I don't, I do not recommend going in debt for photography gear. I do not recommend that. Okay. Um, now I, I get it. There's certain circumstances where you need to get a loan out and pay it off really quickly. I understand, but I don't recommend getting in a ton of debt. Okay. Or, or if you're like or, me, David, if your wife won't let you buy stuff. That is sell, not how you want to. That's not that's that's not how you want to get in trouble. Like, hey, what is yeah. that box? Oh, it's a sixteen hundred dollar lens. That just goes bad, in my personal opinion. Right. Yeah. It the hardest, go- the hard, the the roughest part of my marriage this last year, David, has been all these B and H packages coming to my house, and my <laughs> wife just assuming she's like, uh, why is there a B and H box here? And I'm like, it's David. It's free. You know, it's just it's been <laughs> yeah. fun. I didn't have to pay for that. We almost we almost got a divorce, but it's fine. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for that. Well, Glad I could ruin slash save your marriage. I'm not really sure. You're welcome. Um, I don't know. But the 24 to 70 is great for low light situations. It's fantastic because the maximum aperture is 2.8, which is a pretty large size hole. Okay, 2.8, and it's consistently. So regardless of whether you're zoomed out to 24 or if you are zoomed in to 70, it allows you to shoot at that consistent larger aperture size, which allows more light to come in, which means better for low light, regardless of whether you're zoomed in or you're zoomed out. So this is just a fantastic quality lens. You know how, you know, well, this isn't the sole factor, but you know how you know if it's a quality lens, if it's heavy, okay? Um, now, I love the 50 millimeter, but it's like, you know, a couple ounces versus like, oh, if throw, I was like- Throw them both throw, in the air. I wanna see you throw them both in the air at the no. same time. Yeah. Oh gosh. Um, no, but this one, like you do curls with this 24 to 70, it's going to be like, you're going to be tired. You do curls with this, you're going to be like, yeah, it's fine. You know, like no big deal. Cause it's, it's, it's light. Um, so yeah, the 24 to 70 is an amazing quality lens. All right, let's go for then. Is there anything else you want to say on that? Um, nope. this, the pro, okay. the pro get the pro level, our next level is more of like what me and David actually have in our bag. And that's kind of how the, the book is kind of designed. It's kind of showing yeah. you that. Yeah, so I've got it up on the screen for for folks. We have um, you know David's favorite cameras, and we have Rich's favorite cameras um, up here. We have David's picks, and so I like my favorite camera. My workhorse camera is the Canon 5D Mark IV. Um, you know, it's an amazing camera, but Rich prefers an even newer camera. Which one do you prefer, Rich? I love the Canon EOS R. It's Canon's uh, first full frame mirrorless camera. The new one comes out in June or July, uh, but it is amazing at grabbing focus and tracking mm. so i i love it um you, it's weird there's a lot of weird things that you have to get over kind of like when you switch from pc to apple but after you get used to it you just nail focus every time and i'm very very pleased and excited about the future if the future is great now the future in three years is going to be even better brenda brenda butler said isn't the 24 to 70 the one you broke while doing a video yes it is yes it is for those of you guys who are in the photo mentorship we like to show our mistakes too and when i was filming my uh landscape photography 101 course i literally had uh, i was on the hill of a vent on the side of a vineyard and one of my tripod legs um like was pointing in not a safe direction and literally fell and the camera went whoosh, and it literally broke the lens um while on camera and we just left that in the course because it was like this is real life don't make this mistake don't have your tripod in an unstable position um ever you know and i was a little distracted because i was trying to teach at the same time so i maybe wasn't paying as close of attention um to uh the tripod legs but that is the one that i broke but thankfully um canon's amazing and uh we got it fixed so it's always it's check all- out the always check out the legs you got to look at the legs <laughs> legs legs <laughs> legs first <laughs> <laughs> legs are super important. Rich is a rich, rich is I'm a, a leg guy. He's a legs guy for the tripods. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know. Yeah. Um, I'm more That's of sounds, a. Yeah. <laughs> You're more of a body guy. Yeah. I was gonna say a ball guy because it's like the ball head, you know. But anyways, man, this this episode just got just got explicit, rated, explicit. quick. Yeah, I love yeah, it. Got, it. Got explicit quick. You can be the ball uh, guy all you want. I'm fine being the leg guy. Linda asked, are you a leg man, Rich? And he said, yes, he sure is. You know, my um, wife did take dance for 20 years. That's all I'm saying. Mm, yep. She's got a leg up on the competition. Um, 
I'm a Lego guy, you know, because I'm always stepping on Legos. Literally last night, as I was like putting my kids to bed, I was like sweeping the floor of Legos just so I could like walk through the, you know. There is no worse torture than walking through a dark room fully and confidently (laughs) and then stepping on a toy. I'd rather step on my toy a hundred times. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of the layers of hell, Legos on the floor, wood floor. Oh, yeah, Lego. Um, All right, well, so... You are a Canon R guy, which is awesome. Like we talked about my top three lenses. Well, we talked about the first one, the Canon 24 to 70, um, which is the 2.8 lens. Um, and what's your favorite go-to lens, Rich? The 100 macro. I love this. It's right here as David disappears. Um, this is my favorite lens. I use it for pictures all the time. I just took David's family photos and I only use this lens. And Tammy just posted family picture or like I love David Monar Valentine's pictures. And this is the lens. My wife likes me. She wants to keep me. Well, I was just stoked. She used my pictures. It makes me feel good and like happy. I was like, okay. So this is the lens right here. I overuse it to death. Yeah. It's my favorite lens and it's also pretty inexpensive. Brand new. It's $6.99 from B&H. This is like the best value lens. This lens should be – I like this more than the 51 too. I've got it as well. Love that one. Yeah. I I love it. It's great for portraits. It's great for macro. It's great for – it's like the most versatile lens because it's macro. I can can focus on something close and then the bride Mm -hmm. walks and then I can shoot her and I don't have to change anything. It's pretty sweet. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I think that's one of the kind of the best kept secret lenses as well. I I should have put this on my list because I like it too, but it's one of those ones where I forget to use it for portraits and stuff because it's a macro. So you think you just need to be shooting the details of like the ring, like you want those up close photos of like the ring or something like that, or, you know, a B or whatever it is. Um, You can use this lens for it, but it's amazing for portraits and it's a 2.8. So it just shoots stunning, stunning. And it has image stabilization, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. It's a stable idea. All right, so my next lens on the list is the Canon 50 85 millimeter 1.2. Now keep in mind there is the Nikon and the Sony versions of all these. Here is that 85 1.2. It is heavy. It might even be heavier than that um, than that 24 to 70. Uh, I'm not sure, but it's the there's one. There's a lot more. There's more. There, the glass is a lot thicker than that 85. Ooh, yeah. It's so and and there's a, some newer versions. This one I think I bought. Gosh, eight or nine years ago. And that's the beautiful thing about lenses, folks, is that sometimes you'll update your, I should say this, not sometimes, you'll typically update your cameras more often than you will your lenses. Like I've had this lens, I think for like a decade, you know, I think yeah, all my lenses, lens, all my lenses are like, pretty old. Yeah. You know, and I know Canon's coming out with some new RF lenses and, and stuff too. So I might have to consider some upgrades, but you know, this is a very expensive lens. I think it was 1800 bucks or so when I bought it. Uh, a decade ago, so I don't know what the current price is of it. It may have even gone down. I'm not sure. It's but actually it lasts... 1900 right now on B&H Photo version two. Nice. Oh, so this is probably the version one, I think. Yes. You know, and it, it was is. a little bit slow to focus. But what oh, yeah. I shoot oh, with this... the version two is quicker. Version two is a oh, lot faster. I've used both. Really? Huh. Yeah. Interesting. It's yeah, a, this, almost this... as fast. As, almost as fast as the 100. Will that lens make me a better photographer, Rich? Um, no, but it'll make you a, a less frustrated photographer. <laughs> That's the nice thing about getting the heated seats in the new cars. It makes you less frustrated. So the version two might be something yes. I need to consider, but it's not necessary because this lens is freaking shoots. The background looks like butter. And when I say butter, I say butter because it's like beautiful. All right. So uh, what's your second favorite lens, Rich? The 50, one, two, or the Ooh. Sigma. Honestly, yeah, I'm, I'm a 50. Uh, I actually have the Sigma. Right here. I'm a huge Sigma fan. Canon should mm. be severely embarrassed about how well Sigma's <laughs> doing this. Severely this embarrassed. Lens. This is like a $800 lens compared to Sixteen Canon. Yeah. yeah, so it's half the price, and this is a sharper lens. Um, I've actually done a, a, a comparison before mm. with all the 50s, mm. and this was the fastest focusing and the sharpest image. Ooh. So right. we could, well, that's another challenge we can do. And well, this Sigma. thing's heavy as this. This thing's heavy as a mo too, man. This is a this is all there, and it's the art series now. Sigma ten fifteen years ago was like Takino. It was kind of scary, kind of like that old Canon camera. But now, if it's an art series, has that little A on it. This is a equivalent to an L series lens because of that art series. Ooh, so it's A okay. Um, it's A okay. 
Hey, okay. All right, awesome. We're, we're, we're bringing this in and we're gonna give away that camera kit in just a minute. And so Boom. my next my next lens that I love is the Canon 70 to 200 millimeter 2.8 L series. Now all three of the lenses that I've been talking about that I recommend for the pro level are L series lenses, um, which is Canon's high end series. You know, so for Sigma, it's the A or the art series. For Nikon, it's the, what is it? What Ni is there? Is it, is it Nikkor? Well, Nikkor is one of their is one of their things, but I think it's it's like the gold. I think it's like the S or something like that. So, sorry, Rich and I are not native Nikon shooters. Neither of us are, but we've we've demonstrated a lot of them. We love them. They're great cameras. It's just once you start investing in a specific camera brand, you start you know you keep on investing in that brand. So both Rich and I just happened to do that um, back in the day. So let me pull this out of my bag. But again, nobody asked Picasso what brush brand brush he used. That's right. They just brushed it off as as, as that he was brilliant. But hey, he probably but he, hey, he probably he probably used a Canon brush. Hey, you know people. what? Let's zoom in on what's important right now, okay? And that is this next lens recommendation. It is the Canon uh, seventy to two hundred millimeter lens. I love how you, I love how you had to say uh like that's not the only, like what else would it be? Like you said uh like you didn't know. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I'm on the air. I'm nervous. It's my first podcast episode. I'm just learning how to do this, talking on air stuff. What other um, white lenses do you have? I mean, come on. Yeah, exactly. That's true. That's true. Uh, that wasn't a racist comment. This 7200 millimeter lens is white, like with black Bro, rings ow. around it. Yeah, just, just saying. <laughs> just saying. Um, anyways, we don't discriminate. Uh, um, I, I most like of my lenses of, are black. I yeah. like all sorts right. of color lenses, right? Um, so anyways, this this camera lens is amazing it is very he um, heavy but it can zoom out to 70 which is actually the range that this 24 to 70 leaves off on so at 70 you are <laughs> rich you can't private message me <laughs> I'm just trying private, to private messaging me jokes like while I'm on air. This is this is like I have highly no highly idea. inappropriate jokes. Uh, uh, yeah, nope, nope. Uh, anyways, we are not. <laughs> anyways, okay. So this lens zooms into 70 millimeters, and um, and this lens starts at 70 and zooms into 200. And remember, anything above 50 millimeters, um, you know is actually getting you closer, getting you zoomed in. So at 70, you're a little bit closer to the camera. At 200, you're like real close, okay? And, um, and it's fantastic for portraits, for shooting family portraits, for shooting headshots. It's, you know, it's a 2.8 max, <clears throat> maximum aperture. So it's great for indoors. It's great for shooting weddings. It's my go-to for shooting wedding receptions. And well, actually, I should say more wedding ceremonies. Um, it's just, it's a fantastic lens and uh, it's really great quality. It's also good for shooting wildlife. It's also good for shooting sporting events because it can go to that maximum aperture of 2.8, which is actually a larger size hole. Because with aperture, remember, the larger hole is actually the smaller number. So 2.8 is good. It allows you to shoot in low light and it allows you to blur that background and have that buttery background with sharp, crisp images. Yeah, and and on this pro level, like all my uh, the the worst aperture I have or the biggest hole I have is two point eight. So yep. that's like personally, that's the worst. I don't have anything worse than a two point eight lens, and that's right. kind of like the unwritten rule. Like you're like, oh, is it two eight? Okay, I'll buy it. Um, right. And that's funny because my la my last lens is also a wedding lens. Um, it's the Canon sixteen to thirty five. It is the only zoom lens that I own, and I use it for wedding receptions a lot. And I use it for landscapes. I when I went to Iceland, I kept shooting this, and I didn't think I would, but I just love how wide 16 can look without getting the edges super distorted. So the 16 to 35 is a very wide lens mm. to 35, which is still wider than your native, like you you see with your eyes. So at 35, it's still wide, and then it goes to 16, which is amazingly wide, and it's just 2.8 all the way through. It's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so to be clear, what we're saying is that all of our lenses that we recommend um, for the pro level, they have a maximum aperture of at least 2.8. Okay. And some of them, as you can see, like the Canon 85 1.2 over here, um, this one has a um, 1.2 um, maximum aperture. And so does the Canon 50 millimeter over here. It has a 1.2 maximum aperture. So for pro level, 
you know, gear, it's gonna be at least 2.8. And if it's a zoom lens, like something like this, we want to see um, that 2.8 maximum aperture. We don't want the aperture to be changing or for it to be limiting you um, for those pro level lenses. So Sweet. there we go. Well, let's let's blow through some of these last things quickly just to show them that what's coming, like tease them a okay. little bit. Okay. And then we can – let's get to the giveaway. Like I want to give away this yeah, camera. Yeah, we got to do that. We got to do that. I, we'll, we'll, <laughs> have our, we'll have our team start looking at – that's me holding a strobe. That's funny. Yeah. Is that what's up? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, this That's what's in up. the in the all of this all the links in this book point to B and H where you can actually purchase mm-hmm. everything and have options. So mm-hmm. it has our favorite speed lights, our favorite triggers for wireless shooting. It has David's camera bag, my camera bag, our travel camera bag, and it just yeah. has a lot of great links. And then David, if you sweep over to that last page, it kind of has all the little things you need in your bag, like our go to right. like essentials that. It's something that I end up going back into my camera bag at least once a shoot to grab mm-hmm. something that I forgot or need. And there's also that comprehensive guide with clickable links um, on that last page. So we're yeah, excited can, to give that out. Yeah, and I, I love how you've done this too because Rich did an amazing job putting this together where he's seeing, you know, you're seeing, hey, if you recommend the Canon you know, 5D Mark IV, well, the Nikon equivalent is the Nikon D850 or the Sony equivalent is the A7 III. And so we do a comparison chart here. So if you have a camera brand preference, like we said, we, um, you know, we love all these camera brands. They're amazing. You're not gonna go wrong. Every camera brand, especially these top three, Canon, Nikon, and Sony, are creating amazing, amazing cameras and lenses, okay? So we just started with Canon, so we stuck with Canon, um, but we, we're not you know not paid by Canon or anything like that. That's just who we've always Gosh, used. That, that'd be awesome if they did do that. Yeah, Canon, start paying us, you know, because we have yeah. lots of followers <laughs> that listen to us. So anyways, um, but yeah, no, this, this guide is really incredible and, uh, you guys will be able to download this on davidmolnarcom forward slash zero zero one by the time this episode is up on iTunes. Well, um, what do you think? What's coming, what's coming next week, David? What, you know, what should they look forward to? Next week, we're going to dive deeper into overcoming your fears. Okay. Um, and really kind of breaking through barriers to become the photographer that you are destined to be. And so what I want to do is I want to share a little bit of my story and the struggles because you guys may not know this. You, you might know me as the guy who has, you know, shot a bunch of album covers and had photos on Pepsi cans or, you know, Mountain Dew cans or in People Magazine or whatever. But what y'all don't know is the many tears that I've shed over this in my early years and in recent years sometimes too right? What y'all don't know is the hard work that, or you may or may not know the hard work that we put into this and, uh, and all the trial trial and error that we've gone through. So one of our main goals in this, you know, your photography mentor podcast is to help you guys achieve your photography dreams quicker. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share you, share with you some of the painful part of my story next week. And hopefully it'll help you guys. Hopefully it will inspire you guys a little bit and help y'all get to pursuing your dreams even more faster and of course we're going to give away something because we give away something every week i'll think of a real funny story i'll listen to your story and i'll try to like come up with like an awesome like ridiculous story like i'm one of those people that ridiculous stuff happens to it sure does and then people don't believe me and then all of a sudden we're hanging out in florida so i'm just that guy where things happen to me and then you can't believe it so we're excited um the team have you see the winner david i know who it is Okay, awesome. Well, let's yeah. So all you had to do is share this um, thing to to be the winner. And Rich, I'm going to let you announce the winner here in just a second. So the winner, let's let's recap real quick what they're going to win. They're going to win our essential camera starter kit. Kit, right? And so it comes with the EOS Rebel T7 kit and kit lens. Okay, it, it's also going to come with the Yong, Yong, I say Yong Nuo. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Correctly, Rich says Yong Nuo, something like that. But I think he's Yong. You know what I mean? Um, and it's the fi- 564 speed light. And also, we're going to be giving away the 50 millimeter lens. So all of this is coming in one say nice, what? Pretty, one nice pretty package to one of you guys who shared, you know, our thing. And the winner is the winner is. Kay 
Hickman. K Hickman, can you K- let's just say, hey, what up, girl? <laughs> What's up, girl? What's up, Just Pat? like in the comments, be like, thanks hey, for the is, camera. Is that, is that okay with you, Kay, if that you won the camera? So congrats, Kay Wickman. Uh, Every camera it, begins with K. No, it didn't work. Yeah, camera That's with K's. K. I know. Yeah, no. yeah. It, right, would, awesome. it would work graphically. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be pretty cool. Special K. Um, well, K, congrats. You have won that whole Essential Camera Starter Kit. And we are just jazzed up and excited for you to get that. Our team will be in touch with you to make sure that we get your details to ship that camera and uh, lens and flash, flash to you. So we love B&H. B&H is our favorite camera store. It's where we buy all of our stuff. And so when we're going to buy a camera from us for our students, like, of course, we buy it at B&H and just ship it straight to you guys. And so all the links that are in that um, essential gear guide all point to, you know, to B&H. So um that because that's where we love you know buying our camera do you know why photo. have i ever told you why i love bnh photo why do you love bnh photo rich i once ordered a camera off of a google search and i received it and it had a different name on the camera so instead of being a canon xti it said canon k i s s or k s4 something huh. weird i'd never heard of it and when i picked it up it shook like a maraca like i picked it up and i could hear it shake and it was like so after like three weeks of disputing and sending it back, they finally took it back. And I just went to B&H, ordered the camera, got the right camera, had amazing customer support, an amazing peace of mind that mm-hmm. I wasn't getting anything black market or gray market. Mm-hmm. It's the largest camera store in the world. The most reputable, yeah. Yeah, so that's why, I mean, there's no like reason except that I have once gotten screwed over from a Google search and trying mm-hmm. to save, I say I think it was like I saved $22 by ordering oh, from the gosh. shady shady website. Uh, and then I was like, oh, B&H had free shipping, so it actually would have been cheaper anyway. Thanks. So yeah, And they ship so, fast. They're, they're like, boom, you get it. So to be clear, that first place was not B&H that you ordered from. It was no, a no, shady no. off-brand. Then I, you ordered yeah. it from B&H and got exactly what you were supposed to get on no time. No problem. Yeah. It was great. I, I've ordered, I, I mean, I've ordered probably most of my camera gear uh, from B&H for the last, like, 15 years, 16, probably 17 years. I don't know. They've been in business for a long time. Yeah, so, they have a great um, use section. Their use section is like actually tested and true used equipment, which I don't have a problem with as long as it's like above a eight or nine scale. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Lisa is saying, I love B&H. Their customer service is incredible and their chat assist has saved me money. Uh, go there, go check out B&H. If you're ever in New York, go to B&H. It's like a kid in a candy store. It is the coolest freaking this, place with the robots like grabbing stuff it's so awesome i know i think we're gonna have a meetup for our uh photo mentorship students at bnh they're they were inviting us to like come down and host like a workshop or a meetup there and get to play with a bunch of gear peg said this i, I mean I, like i don't even know how long bnh has been around 30 40 years something i mean i'm 35 and well I'm it used to be bnh is bell and how it used to be a camera company yeah so i mean i can i can google search that but i mean but yeah, bnh pe- has been pe- around pe- peg crowder minute. is saying Peg saying, I bought my first camera from them in 1983. So um, that's cool. Yeah, they've been around like they're the biggest, best, trusted. That's why we that's why we've chosen to partner with BH and work with them because like they're the camera store we know, love, and trust, who Rich and I have been buying from for you know over a decade. And we know that they're gonna take amazing care of our students. And you're always gonna know that you're gonna get amazing customer service and you're also gonna get, you know, like you're probably gonna get the best deal on the internet. And if you don't, you know you're getting exactly you know, a good quality. You're not getting some off-brand market thing. So, hey guys, this was amazing. If you guys want to learn more about um, anything in photography, whether it's landscape photography, portrait photography, um, this podcast episode is brought to you by our amazing membership community, The Photo Mentorship. So you can visit that at thephotomentorship.com. And uh, and if you're not already a member, come meet us there and uh, and we'd love to hang out with you. We do live trainings every single week inside the photo mentorship and we have new courses and new how I got the shot episodes and new mini tutorials and all sorts of fun stuff that we release every single week inside of the photo mentorship. It's really uh, it, it's really the, the community and the educational resource that I wish I had had when I was starting out and booking my first professional gigs. I wish so desperately that I could have you know had that. So go to the photomentorship.com and check that out. And uh, I'm just super jazzed and excited. Next week, we're going to give away something else. 
um, and we'll announce that live right here on the Facebook page where we record these episodes live. Um, and uh, thank you all so much for tuning in. You all are incredible. Congrats. Let to us know. Kay. Let us know what you want. Yep. Yeah, let us yep. know what you want us to talk about. Let us write us a review on Spotify, iTunes, iTunes. anywhere podcasts are regularly available. Yep. And uh, just let us know what you want because we have like a loose script. But if you're like, hey, I really need to learn this, we'll listen to it and do it. So let us know yep. what you want. You can email us at hello at davidmolnar.com. Yep. Absolutely. And we're ready. We're ready to here to help you. And congrats, Kay, for being our awesome winner. I want to see mm -hmm. a picture of yep. something awesome taken with this yep. essential starter kit. Gear guide coming soon. Gear guide coming soon. DavidMiller.com forward slash zero zero one. And you'll be able to download that gear guide. So love you guys. Have a fantastic week. We'll see you right here next week. And for all of you guys who are the photo mentorship students, we'll see you tomorrow because we go live on Wednesdays inside the photo mentorship. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a I love you. Day. All right, bye. I love I love you. You love me. I, I love you. I love you. Please subscribe on iTunes or Spotify so you never miss out on news and events. Give us a rating on iTunes or simply tell a friend about us. It helps us get the word out so we can help more people reach their photography goals. This podcast is brought to you by thephotomentorship.com.